Alrighty, that is all the NBA that we needed to go over for today. Now I want to quickly touch on some NFL stories because the league is getting absolutely wild, folks. And usually we talk stories on kind of Thursday show or Saturday show when we have extra time in the show, but there's just so much we cannot wait for. So let's just go over some breaking news that is going on today and what's been going on over the last couple of days. So first one up here is the Cleveland Browns. What is going on with this? You had a chance to tra trade OBJ last night and you don't. And now we get this. Cleveland Browns, why? Wide receiver OBJ has been told he's excused from practice today. And we're hearing that he he was ready to practice. So it kind of caught him off guard. Like, whoa, what's going on here? So let's see what's going to happen with this Browns team. We know Baker Mayfield's not getting OBJ the ball. Is he kind of expressing his discontent maybe in the locker room? We haven't really seen it in the national media. But to tell him, hey, you don't need to come to practice today. That's real bizarre. So this is just broke. This broke about like 10 minutes before we went live. And I don't think we have any true updates yet. So this is going to be absolutely crazy, folks. What they do with OBJ. You had the chance to trade him. You didn't trade him. He had one target last last week for six yards in a huge game, a revenge game for the Steelers. So it's like, why would you just not trade him? So we'll see. We'll get more information as today progresses, as this week progresses. But OBJ may just be getting let go from the Browns. That'd be wild. But we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, the Panthers have designated re running back Christian McCaffrey to return off of IR. So now Sam Darnold can finally be good again because he's got his main man, Christian McCaffrey, in the backfield. Um, the Jets, uh, Joe Douglas and Robert Sala are quote in lockstep with each other on the Jets quarterback situation. Um, kind of talking about, do we go back to Zach Wilson? He's not healthy quite yet. So still rocking with Mike White, but they say, they said, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So maybe they kind of sit Zach Wilson a little bit. Mike White got it done. We'll see what happens with the Jets quarterback situation. This week, Mike White is definitely going. Zach Wilson's not healthy yet. Um, and I think it's two weeks minimum for Zach Wilson. So he may be even out longer. And it's definitely going to make it, their decision easier uh, to kind of be like, no, Zach, take a couple, take another week. You need another week, Zach. Let's take one more week. If Mike White is getting it done, won one game without him, without uh, Zach Wilson. Let's see if they can win a second. And then the big news from today, which is getting everybody riled up again. And folks, will y'all relax on the vaccination status? It's like, I don't understand why y'all love getting riled up and y'all love being angry, folks. And you can't come at me being like, what are you talking about? We don't love being angry. Y'all are on Facebook and we know Facebook, that's what it does. It keeps you engaged by fighting with each other. Y'all love being miserable. Y'all love, and I don't get it. We don't do that over here. I don't even do that personally. I was like, I I'm cool as a cucumber, folks. I roll with it. I never get angry by really anything um and y'all love getting angry again on the same things and y'all love going to war and debating and thinking that your position is right and the only clear-cut right choice and your charge language uh calling everybody else dumb and stupid for not thinking the way you think it's just it's so tiring for me and i barely get involved with it because it's so nonsensical to do but y'all do you. Uh, so this is the big news from today, folks. Aaron Rodgers has tested positive for COVID-19, and he will not be playing this week because he is unvaccinated. So he has to kind of quarantine for 10 days at minimum. Now, why is this a big story? Because Aaron Rodgers kind of said <laughs> a, little, a little earlier in the offseason, yeah, I'm, he said I'm immunized. Um, so, and I think the phrasing of the question was, Aaron Rodgers, are you vaccinated? Not with the specific COVID-19. So I think Aaron Rodgers, once again, Aaron Rodgers, big, big brain IQ, think he can outsmart everybody. He thinks he's the smartest person in the room. Um, you know, I think he kind of phrased the answer of saying, yes, I'm immunized. Because when people say, yeah, you're, I'm immunized, they kind of talk about the, uh, like the main vaccines. The, the measles, the mumps, the rubella ones that everybody gets as a kid. Uh, that's kind of what you phrase as, yes, I'm immunized. Uh, so the phrasing, I don't think specifies, with, and this was kind of, uh, I think in August when, uh, and the videos are coming out, folks. If you go, if you take a look on Twitter, I mean, that's what you're going to see is Aaron Rodgers stories. Uh, but um I think Aaron Rodgers was like, yeah, okay, uh, you know, the reporter didn't ask me if I'm vaccinated for COVID-19. He just said, am I vaccinated? And I am vaccinated. I've got, you know, my MMR, my other ones that I got as a kid. Yes, I am immunized. I am immunized. 
Y'all didn't ask any specifics. Aaron Rodgers, big brain IQ. I'm the smartest person in the room. I can outthink anybody. I'm smart. I'm kind of godlike mental here. Um, I'm smarter than everybody. And we've been tracking this, folks. This is not the first time that we've said this, folks. This is a uh, this is what we've seen by Aaron Rodgers through his entire career. This is why we are kind of good on saying this. It's not like um, you know this is nonsense that we're spewing. This is kind of what we see by Aaron Rodgers. He's got a big brain IQ. He at least believes it. So I think that's kind of what he was going for, but he's not vaccinated, and now we got this kind of jumble mess going on. So it's going to be interesting. Once again, people are getting, I mean, should we should we take a look at the comments? I don't. I don't really want to. Um, but um, I'm sure, I mean, I'm already getting other personalities that I follow on Twitter here for my sports account, the Takes by Fan account, and they are just going wild on this man. And it's just like, get it, don't get it. I don't care. Get it? Don't get it. It's your choice. But everybody else likes to force everything else. Y'all love to be miserable. We digress. So that's the Aaron Rodgers situation. And then the last thing here, Michael Thomas. He's out for the season. We were ready for this man to come back. We were like, we were just waiting for this man to come back. And you we were off the bye. We were like, okay, you were good after the bye. That's what the initial kind of statement was in the offseason. But now he's like, no, I'm done. So this is the official statement by Michael Thomas. He is done for the year. He says this, quote, I've always been a man of faith. In these past few months, my faith has truly been tested. As many of you know, early last season, I injured my ankle and worked extremely hard over the next few months to get back in time to finish the season. Unfortunately, the rehab didn't go as planned, and earlier this offseason, it was apparent I would need to have a procedure to repair the injury. Since then, the team and I have worked diligently day and night to rehab to get me back on the field. Unfortunately, there has been another small setback to which we will have to address. To my displeasure, I will not be able to make it back in time for this season, but will do everything in my power to get back to the player I have always been. I know God doesn't make mistakes, so I will continue to follow in his path and cannot wait to be back on the field in front of the best fans on the planet. So not having Michael Thomas, you just lost your starting quarterback in this offense already is not that explosive. So a big blow here for the Saints now with another decision, Trevor Simeon or uh, Taysom Hill. So ooh, the Saints not getting good here. All right, and then the last thing here, I'm sure y'all have heard this. Oh, my goodness. Las Vegas Raiders wide receiver Henry Ruggs killed somebody, folks, drinking, driving, getting into a car accident. And let me go back to my home feed right here because now we get a mug shot. Ooh, this is real bad, folks. He, they, The Raiders already released him. He's not going to play in the league. He's probably going to jail, career over. Uh, you know, truly unfortunate here. And then also he killed somebody, a loss of life, always never good folks especially when it's not his fault it's not like Henry Ruggs got hit by a drunk driver Henry Ruggs was the drunk driver that killed somebody so just a mess of a situation here you know, now with Rich Bisaccia again here having to face, you know, another hurdle for this Raiders team. And now this one hits a little bit more close to home because this is somebody like taking somebody's life and all that. So, man, oh, man, what a huge, unfortunate situation. And let's read this because this is news to me. So now we got some breaking news here for Henry Ruggs situation. Here we go. Former Raiders wide receiver Henry Ruggs, once again former because they did release him last night officially off the team, is accused of driving 156 miles an hour, se oh my god, seconds before the crash. Folks, 156 miles an hour, holy cow. He was at 127 miles an hour when airbags deployed. His blood alcohol level, level was .161, that's double, .08. Double that. That's .16. So double over the legal limit. So not good at all at all, which is more than twice the legal limit. Like we just said, we've got some good math over here. A loaded gun was also found in the car. Oh, my God. And this is his mugshot, folks. Neck breaks, cut on the nose, emotionless, soulless eyes because he knows, he knows it's over. Man, oh, man, truly unfortunate. This Raiders team putting up the most points it has over the last two games. And, uh, you know, Rich Passaccia turning around the team and Derek Carr only having three incompletions and all that. And now we get this mess. So we'll, we're, 
we're still we still like the Raiders. We'll see how much they miss Henry Ruggs offensively. Deshaun Jackson's available. He didn't get traded. He's got released, not traded. So we'll see if the Raiders kind of bring him in. But the whole situation is just truly, truly unfortunate, heartbreaking, inexcusable. We're not making any excuses. I mean, this is the this is exactly what should happen. I mean, you go to jail. You should not be able to hide behind your celebrity or fame or anything like that. So, man, oh man, what a what a mess. What a mess. What a mess. Absolutely heartbreaking. So. Um, and now we get this. Oh, this just came up 30 seconds ago. Here we go. District Attorney Steve Wolfson, two reporters about Henry Ruggs saying, quote, there is no more suspicion. Henry Ruggs made a choice to drive while under the influence and be twice over the legal limit. I have never seen a case in my 41 years of a person who is charged with a crime driving in excess of 150 miles an hour. 150 miles an hour, folks. I don't even think roller coasters go 150 miles an hour. So what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? So... Holy moly, a hundred, could you, I don't, like, obviously, I'm, like, could you imagine seeing, let alone not even being in the car that got hit by 150, could you imagine seeing that crash of somebody driving 150 miles an hour? Wow, that's, uh, oof, that's, I don't even know, that's mind-blowing, 150, jeez. I don't think I've ever driven 100 miles an hour ever before. I think the, I cap out at like 80. I, th I think I would cap if I if I go a little over the limit, uh, which I'm, I think I incriminate myself a little bit. But uh, I think the most I've done in the car is like 80. And that I'm like, mm, I need to <laughs> I need to slow down. This man was going double that, bro. Wow, absolutely crazy. All right, so that's all the stories that we just wanted to quickly go over.